Hey guys, Courtney from CD Exotics here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are doing a build video on a gecko enclosure. So today uh, we're going to be doing a build video on a gecko enclosure and if you've been following my Instagram you've already kind of seen what it looks like but we're going to go ahead and build it today. I have done two different sizes. We're only going to be building the one size today but I will put a cut list um, and dimensions for both sizes. Um, I'll put that on screen so you guys can check that out. The build is the same for both. It's the same exact thing. So I'm just gonna be building one because I don't wanna bore you guys building two. But first, we are going to do a couple uh, shirts that I got uh, this weekend at Battlefield. I got a Bane of My Exotics t-shirt. Hopefully you guys can kinda see that. Um, and he also gave me a cool sticker. We also met up with Samson's Snickatorium and got a sticker from them took a picture with them. It's pretty cool and Got a shirt from R&B reptiles So that was pretty awesome meeting up with Ben there. So um, it's too bad Ryan was sick But uh, it was really nice talking to Ben. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, I did a little interview for him and he did a little interview for me. So check that out on the show video for Battlefield. I also got in the mail a shirt for Boz Reptiles. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Boz, B-O-Z, Boz Reptiles. And on the back, they are on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and Morph Market. So make sure you check them out. Uh, they also sent a couple stickers. Oh, and a magnet too. This one's a magnet. I didn't even realize it. So two stickers and a magnet. Put that on my fridge. It's pretty awesome. And just a little business card. So make sure you go check them out. Uh, pretty excited to get some shirts. Start up my I don't have too many shirts, so that'll kind of start up my shirt collection um, I also am gonna put a little clip in here I went to Maryland cork this morning and picked up 25 pounds of cork bark So I was really excited for that. Um, I got a really good deal because I picked it up from them uh, I got 15 pounds of flats and 10 pounds of tubes and they look awesome, so I will go ahead and put that clip in here. You can kind of see what I got. Um, if you are anywhere in this area, I definitely recommend going to Maryland Cork and picking up um, because they're, I mean, they're not too far away. Went to uh, Maryland Cork today, picked up some cork. I got uh, 15 pounds of flats and 10 pounds of tubes so i should be good for a while this is a very very large box and i got some really big really nice pieces most of them are quite quite large so i'm definitely gonna have to break them down a bit but i got some really nice stuff here some really big pieces maybe you can see like kind of the size here it's a pretty big box and then over here is my 10 pounds of tubes so I got some nice some smaller ones and stuff which is pretty awesome pretty excited about that. so I'm definitely really excited about this cork um, definitely got some pretty cool pieces so uh, and this should last me a while I've got these, uh, the bioactive gecko tanks that I'm doing, and I've also got 
this 29 gallon that's chilling here in my living room that's going to be for dark frogs. So I'm gonna break some of this stuff down and uh, get it in the tanks. Be pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and get into this build. So there are two different ways you can assemble this. You can either use screws for the entire thing. And then if you're trying to go, if you're planning on going bioactive, I definitely recommend siliconing, um, you know, the bottom portion of it and a little bit up the sides if you're screwing it in. Um, even if you do the other method, I still went ahead and siliconed mine just because I don't want any leaks or anything. Um, but I am gonna show you guys how to glue these together. Um, and these are, I've seen a couple different ways that you can glue PVC. Um, this way works really well so far. Um, I've been really liking it. So this is 2P10 and I used the thin and the thick, but honestly, probably try the medium as well because sometimes the thin is just a little bit too thin and sometimes the thick is just a little bit too thick. I have all of the viscosities except for medium, so I can't really tell you how medium is, but I would probably order medium at some point. And then this is the activator that you use for it, um, and it basically makes it like instant set, and it works out really good because it, you know, you don't have to clamp stuff for super long, it just goes really quick and it basically welds it together so um, you can't disassemble it later on. So if it's something that you wanna be able to take apart, then I definitely don't recommend the glue. But if you are um, not worried about taking it apart ever again, the glue is pretty awesome and I feel like it really seals things in better as far as keeping the humidity in because it, it basically welds the PVC together and it's extremely, extremely strong. So make sure it's positioned correctly before you use this because you have about two seconds before it is permanently attached. So if you are a little leery of that, screws are probably your friend. Um, the screws that I used, these, I couldn't get the ones that I really wanted. These are black, but these are number four and they are half inch screws. Um, I did try to use, I think the number sixes that I use, they're either number six or number eight, I can't remember, that I use on the half inch PVC and it was not, they were too big. So the number fours are perfect because we are using quarter inch PVC for this build. This is super lightweight, it's super easy to get and it's about half the price of the half inch PVC. I will say that if you are planning on making these stackable, I would not use the quarter inch. I would use the half inch. I'm not making mine stackable. Mine are going on one of the metal bakers racks and I'm putting lights overhead. So I wasn't worried about them being quarter inch. The quarter inch seems to be working fine. I've been using that prototype one for two or three weeks now and I did make a change with the ventilation but other than that, I really like the design. Everything seems to be good with it. So we're gonna go ahead and do this build. Let's get started. So a couple tools that you're gonna need, um, regardless of which method you do, and I'm actually doing a little bit of a hybrid of both. I'm gonna use a few screws and I am going to glue and I feel like it just is like doubling the strength. But you're definitely gonna wanna drill. You don't need to pre-drill with this, so don't worry about that. But you do need to of these 90 degree clamps. These are your best friend. I would not do this project with glue without these. You could attempt to do it with screws without these, but these are gonna be the best like 20 bucks you've ever spent in your life. So get these, and like I said, don't attempt to glue this project unless you're using these 90 degree clamps. All right, so we've got a couple pieces here. We've got a screen mesh that I made. This is just the window screen kit and I just made it to the size that I need. So I'm not doing a tutorial on how to do this. You can YouTube it, it's super simple, but you just need to make it the correct dimensions. 
and these are really easy to put together and it works out pretty good. I have two top pieces because this is going to go on the top kind of like this and uh, then my light is going to shine down through there and it's also my ventilation so that works out really well. So I have my top pieces, I have my bottom piece already cut and I have two side pieces and a back piece. So this enclosure is going to fit uh, three wide on a 36 inch metal rack and it's going to fit four wide on the on the 48 inch rack and this enclosure is 11 inches wide by 12 inches deep by 18 inches tall so it's more or less the equivalent to a 10 gallon so it makes a nice um, juvenile or grow out size tank. All right, so we are going to start with our bottom piece and our two side pieces. So I'm gonna start with one side piece and this PVC is textured like a wood grain on one side and smooth on the other. So I've been doing the textured wood grain on the inside and the smooth on the outside but it's totally your preference how you do that. I don't know as it really matters. I did the textured on the inside because I'm planning on doing backgrounds and I wasn't sure if maybe um, the foam and everything might adhere a little bit better with the texture, but I haven't tried it yet, so that could be totally irrelevant. So we're just gonna take our, we're gonna take our sticker off is what we're going to do first because I didn't realize this piece had the sticker on it still. So this build is pretty quick. I'm not really going to do too much time lapse on this build the way I typically do on the rack builds um, because, like I said, this one is pretty quick. So I'm just going to make sure I have it lined up on the correct side because this is not a square. I am putting this on the bottom, so my sides and my back are sitting on top of this. And you'll kind of see what I mean once I get it all put together. Um, but that's how the dimensions are set up. So I'm just going to use my clamps. I'm going to make sure everything is lined up perfectly. And I can assemble, I did a bunch of these the other night and I assembled them pretty darn quick. Um, kind of once I got going with them, it's a little bit slower doing a build video for you guys, but this is a really quick build. I got a piece of cardboard for underneath this, uh, because I, my husband would not be too happy if I got glue all over the table. We're replacing the floor in here, so I wasn't too concerned about the floor, but definitely don't want glue all over the table. Um, so I'm going to use the thin with this one uh, because it's a very good, I got a, got a very good cut with this. Um, and if you want to know how I cut these, check out one of my other rack build videos because you can see on there how everything is cut. But you're basically just going to take your glue. This is like water. Um, so you got to be pretty quick with it. Any excess is going to foam up and... You, you know, you don't want too much foam. So we're just going to run a little kind of bead right down the seam here. And it's gonna wick underneath, and that's what's gonna give us our really strong bond. The thick won't really pull up in there. That's why I use it then. So I'm just gonna go super quick. And you saw how quick that was was really fast. Now I'm going to take my activator and see how it foamed up. And I'm going to just do a little bit on the back side for anything that kind of came through. All right, and it's already dry and I can unclamp it. I am, I do see a little bit of a gap here, so I'm actually gonna go back over it with a little bit of this thick, 
just to make sure that the gap is filled in. Because this one had a little bit of a gap in here. You just gotta be careful when you're doing this because it's already got activator sprayed on it and you don't want to glue your bottle shut. There we go. You don't have to buy the activator. I do recommend it. If you don't buy the activator, um, you've got to wait like 30 seconds for a cure instead of five seconds. And it's really like five minutes for a full cure. Whereas this is about 30 seconds for a full cure. So that side is good to go. You can see there's a little bit of a wobble, but that's just because it's um, the length of it. I actually did try and break one of these to test it, and the joint did not break. Um, the actual PVC broke. So that tells you anything about the strength of this glue. So this is not just your normal uh, PVC glue that you buy for, you know, pipes at the at Home Depot. And uh, you can get this glue on Amazon. That's where I got it from, and uh, it's pretty awesome stuff. You can YouTube it. They've done some. Most people use it with uh, wood, but I did find someone who was using it for PVC, and uh, I tried it, and I really, really liked it. All right, we're gonna do the same thing here. Like I said, you can see a little bit where it foams up, but it's really not too bad. So now I've got my sides and my bottom attached. And now we're gonna go for the back side. And it's going to fit inside these two. It's a little snug in this side. Try it on the other side. This one's a little bit snug. No worries though. Be a nice tight fit. Try to slide it right down in there. clamp our top said if you were using screws all you would be doing is attaching you know instead of where I was gluing you'd just be putting a couple screws in it is a little bit higher here because I my top does not go all the way it doesn't sit on top of the back here so you can kind of see if it, there's a little bit of height difference there but it's no big deal quarter inch difference so it should be fairly flush I'm done with it said I'm not a perfectionist I'm not a professional with this if you are looking for perfection I recommend ordering a cage from gecko junkies because their cages are amazing and they are perfection they have CNC's and it's beautiful I use a circular saw and it is not perfection, but it looks pretty good and it contains all my animals, so that's what matters. I am going to use some screws at this point and I'm going to glue and I want you guys to kind of see, see why. See the, the gap here? That's really hard to glue. And you've got to try and run glue down it, hold it. It's set so fast, it's really hard. It's easier to just put like three screws in here, make sure everything's lined up really good, and then run the glue down it. Um, it's just easier that way. So I am going to go ahead and screw this. I'm going to have to turn it a little bit so it's going to be a little bit harder for you guys to see, but I still have to be able to build it, so... Um, I said I'm just gonna do I'm gonna just screw it to top screw it to bottom and screw in the middle and that'll kind of make sure everything is lined up and pulled together okay 
And I didn't go all the way to the top. You know, you can see I'm kind of, because there's no point going all the way to the top. Like I'm just tacking it together basically. And you do want to make sure that you're getting stuff actually lined up. That's the whole point of the screws. So, like I'm going to push from this side because it is bowing in a little bit. And getting it lined up perfect. You just want to be careful when you're screwing that you're not going, you know, you're going completely straight because this is only quarter inch material and it's, it's quite thin. So, sorry if you can't see too well, but I'm doing the best I can here. All right. So, I don't know if you can see a little bit better now. It's pulled it in really nicely, and now it's ready to glue. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. I am gonna speed up through this part because you don't need to see me screwing in three screws. Exactly the same as I did the other one. Had to turn on the light, so sorry if the lighting changed a little bit. Um, got a little cloudy outside. But here it is, assembled. Everything except the top and the front, which is going to be clear acrylic. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do the top first, and we we're going to do the front last. We don't need these anymore. So I'm going to turn this a little bit and you'll see that there's a few spots where like the glue little excess kind of bubbled and it's really easy to just kind of pick it off so um, now we've got our top pieces and our screen piece and we're just gonna put it on the top now I don't glue the top um, I, ha I haven't been gluing the top I shall say because I'm not a hundred percent sure how much I'm going to love this much ventilation. I can't make it any smaller because the frame corners, um, you can't go any smaller with this space here. So this is four inches. So I'm hoping that it's not too much ventilation. If it is, I'll have to think about something else, but I didn't want to glue the top because then it's permanent. So I'm just screwing in the top so I can always take it off if I need to. Um, it's kind of hard to see how the top is. Let's take you guys off the tripod. So here is the way the top is going to be. And I've got, still got to line it up a little bit, but you can kind of see front, 
mind all my junk in the back. Sorry, my kitchen's a mess. Um, we got the piece here, the two pieces here, and our ventilation right in the middle. And you can line it up however works for your lights. I just have it lined up the way that it works for my setup. So any of this stuff can be altered however you need it to be altered. But this is kind of like your basic guide. So I'm just going to line up this back piece first. And I don't put tons of screws in here. I just do one, two, one, two. And I do three on the back side just to kind of pull everything in tight. I will say that the quarter inch PVC does um, warp a bit more. Well, the half inch doesn't really warp at all. Um, so if you're going for absolute perfection, I would recommend half inch because you'll lose some of the, uh, you won't have some of these warping issues a little bit. So basically I'm kind of, you know, it's a little bit out of alignment here. I'm going to use the screws to kind of pull it together. The quarter inch is super lightweight though. And I just pull it right in line and it works out really well. All right, so that piece is on. Now I'm just gonna put a couple screws in here cause you can kind of see this has a bit of wiggle to it. And I just wanna kind of pull it down make sure it's all flush. Like I said, this is not perfection. Um, it's very hard to get perfection with a circular saw. Um, I mean, a table saw, you probably do a little bit better with. I don't have a table saw that's big enough or good enough for this kind of project. So I just use a circular saw. But it just kind of shows you guys that like, even if you have limited tools, you can still do this stuff. Um, you know, these cages without the acrylic cost me seven dollars. Um, well, I guess nine dollars, seven dollars in PVC and then two dollars for each vent. So if you compare that to the price of a gecko junkies cage, that's a huge difference. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but I don't mind doing it. Um, and it saves me a ton of money. And honestly, I don't know who's going to be coming and inspecting my cages to make sure that they look perfect. Um, so don't worry about it if your stuff is not perfect. Like I said, if you want perfect, buy the cage. Don't build one. End of story. So this I'm just going to screw down and I'm just screwing right through the plastic corners. Um, it's pretty thin there. You're not going through a whole lot of plastic and you just have to watch when you're doing it to make sure that like you're actually going into the center of the PVC down there. Cause you don't want to come out the sides um, of the PVC. All right, so there we go. Cage is all done except for the front. Um, there is a little bit of a lip here. You can cut that off if it really bothers you. Um, this ended up being a tiny bit bigger than I was planning on, but I couldn't make it any smaller. And I just didn't go back and, and cut this down a little bit. But I'm just gonna put my acrylic up underneath of it 
and it's not going to be a big deal because I'm going to have a little um, acrylic piece here. I'm going to have a four inch um, substrate dam and then the door will fold down. So I'm going to go cut that acrylic and then I will come back and show you how to put it on. All right, so I'm not going to show you guys gluing this down. I'm going to do that in the next video in this series because I want to be able to do the background without having any of this stuff in my way. So, but I do have, I'm going to show you how I would do it for anybody who's not planning on doing a background and wants to just attach it. Um, I've got my acrylic cut. I did a four inch substrate dam and I did an inch and a half uh, piece on the top. So if you did chose not to do, if you did a solid top, you would want to cut your ventilation in this. You would just drill a bunch of little holes in this and that would be the way you would ventilate it if you chose not to do the screen top. But I just want to show you that I've got my substrate dam, my top, uh, the door is not quite cut to size yet and it all still has the protective film on it. Uh, acrylic when you buy it, it comes with protective film on both sides to keep it from getting scratched. But I would take the same glue, I would use the thick on this and I would run a bead all around here. I would spray my activator on this piece um, and then I would just set it down and make sure it's perfectly lined up when you first set it down because wherever you set it down is where it's going to stay. Um, but you want to remove your plastic protection before you do that. Um, so I would glue these two down and then I would cut my door to size, which it's not cut to size just yet. But what I would do is once it is cut to size, obviously it would fit in here correctly. I would line it up. I would lay it down like this and I would take my uh, two acrylic hinges and I would set them here, make sure everything's lined up. And then I would put a little dab of glue on here. Same glue I've been using the whole project like that and I would take I have a little knob here and I would put that there I would glue that down and then the other thing that I would do is I would take my little these are window screen clips um, and I would just drill a little hole in this top um, it's tough to fall down in there on me um, in this top piece here I would drill a little hole you want to be super careful when you're drilling acrylic because it can crack. You want to use the smallest possible and work your way up. Um, and I would just drill that in there to attach it. Um, one on each side here like this and attach. And then that's what would keep my door from open, you know, flying open. So I will show you guys in the next video how I actually attach all this stuff. I just want to kind of walk through it um, for anyone who is not doing a background and wants to just go ahead and get the cake finished. But like I said, I want to do the backgrounds before I, you know, I want to, because this is not a huge cage, so I want to make sure that I have plenty of space to work to do my background and get everything carved and everything like that. Um, but this cage would be awesome for anything like 10, you know, needs a 10 gallon size, um, growing out geckos. You could do, you know, some smaller, um, maybe carpet pythons or like any kind of arboreal snake, any kind of arboreal animal um, that needs something smaller, you could totally do in a cage this size. Or you can also do the other cage size that I have. Um, it is 15 inches wide by 16 and a half inches deep by 24 inches tall. So it's slightly smaller than the 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra. Uh, but I did that because I wanted to make sure that it fit well on those um, the metal wire racks. So I can get three across on a 48 inch wide rack and two across on the uh, 36 inch wide rack. That's why I went with the dimensions that I did. But um, stay tuned, stick around, and I will, once I get the background and everything done, I will go ahead and do a video of that showing the background and everything um, and installing the front door and I will also do a video of um, the substrate 
uh, the false bottom I'm going to do. I'm going to do an egg crate false bottom, I think. And um, planting, everything like that. I'll do a full series on it. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any more of this build.